Imagine asking Jesus that question. Lord, uh, when you go to heaven, can you make me and my brother sit at your left and at your right hand in the glory? Basically meaning, Jesus, can you give us the most prestigious offer, you know, honoured, glorious position in heaven more than anyone else who's ever been? <laughs> it's a pretty big ask. Now, the disciples, rightly so probably, they, they all started getting a bit annoyed at James and John. James and John, why did you ask Jesus this question? And the poor disciples, and so Jesus called them together and he gave them um, a very important life lesson. And this life lesson was who he is and how they are to imitate him. It's a very important question, um, lesson. It's for all of us. I mean, we're not probably not going to ask Jesus if we can sit at his right hand as king in heaven. But this applies. It's a very important li uh, life lesson that we need to know. Who is Jesus? What is his character like? What is the character of God? And how are we called to become like him? One of the most important questions we can ask in life. So what does Jesus say? How does he respond to this question? Well, he says, For the Son of Man himself did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. Jesus came to earth in the most um, humble way, the most astonishing way. He was born um, where the animals uh, slept. His parents had to flee. You know, he, was, he wasn't born to a, a noble king or something where he could be rich. And um, he was eating and dining with tax collectors and sinners, known sinners, you know, the people that decided to despise. He was very humble. <laughs> he came to serve. Jesus set the, the bar very high when it came to that. And he gave everything for his bride, the church. The church is called the bride in, in tradition, okay? He gave everything for us, the church. You know, this was astonishingly predicted. Long before Jesus was born, long before he was born, we had this prophet called Prophet Isaiah in the first reading. And what it says is quite astonishing. It says, By his sufferings shall my servant justify many, taking their faults on himself. Isn't this amazing? Long before Jesus was born, Isaiah spoke of the suffering servant, Jesus. He would be the one who would to, to suffer for all, take everyone's sins upon himself and, and end up on the cross to, to save us. But servant, God's described as servant in the Bible. At several points of the Bible, helper, servant. This is the character of God. This is who he revealed to himself to be. Someone who loves so passionately that he puts others first. If we want to become like Jesus, we are to serve and to sacrifice for others. Now this involves a sincere and profound humility. So humility is something that allows us to answer this call. And it's quite interesting that you have the disciples here uh, asking Jesus for, you know, the highest, most prominent uh, seats in heaven. And you also have them arguing who's the greatest at different points. Who's the greatest, you know? And it wasn't until Jesus rose again that he told them um, to wait in, in Jerusalem until the, the you receive power from on high. Relate, wait until you receive power from on high. So what happened was the church had its first novena. So Jesus ascends to heaven, and then for nine days, the disciples are no longer asking who's the greatest, no longer um, asking for prominent seats in heaven. They're on their knees praying. They're praying in the upper room. And you know the story at Pentecost, what happens if you pick up Acts of the Apostles, you'll see the Holy Spirit came upon them with Mother Mary there. See, Mother Mary was there the most humble person probably who ever lived. So humble. And, and her and the disciples are there, docile to God. What are you going to do, God? And what happened was the Holy Spirit came upon them and they went out serving others. It's a, a remarkable story. I highly encourage you to pick up Acts of the Apostles. You know, someone was healed by a shadow. It's an, it's an, story. It's an extraordinary story. Just pick up Acts and go from there. This, great, this cardinal that we have in the church, uh, Cancel the Master, he said this beautiful quote, 
This is how Mary prepared the apostles to receive the first Pentecost. She helped them make themselves lowly, humble, and docile. Mary, this, uh, we call it the humble handmaid. What a title. The humble handmaid. Willing to, to humble herself and to, to be used by the Lord in whatever way that God asked. And now we find the same disciples no longer arguing over who's the greatest, but they go out there with confidence on mission. This is what Jesus um, taught us. Jesus himself, he, he washed his disciples' feet before he went. He, he bowed down and he, he did some, you know, when you, you have sandals back in the day, MGLs wear sandals. I'm a bit of a rebel. I have cool brown and white shoes, but <laughs> your feet get dirty if you wear sandals. And there is the Lord, the king of the universe, um, washing their feet. And he knelt down to wash their feet. And he said, I am among you as one who serves. See, in what Jesus said and what he did after this, he said, I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. This is our God. This is the character of Jesus. This is the one we follow, who we should imitate. I just celebrated a wedding a couple of weeks ago in Perth, in the cathedral. That's the cathedral in Perth. I didn't put a photo of the couple. We don't want to embarrass them. But <laughs> so that's the, um, and it was beautiful, uh, great ceremony. And this couple, very traditional Catholics, um, good, good friends of mine, very traditional Catholics, and they chose readings that usually don't get picked because they sound a bit funny to a modern audience. Um, and so most of, or half of the crowd probably wasn't Catholic, and so <laughs> they're, they're hearing these readings, what does that mean? I'll, I'll pull up one of the readings. It was you that created Adam and Eve, you who created Eve, his wife, to be his help and support, and for these two, human race was born. Or sprung, a different translation. <laughs> and then some people in the crowd saying, Eve's supposed to be like a helper? Is that, what does that mean? She's servant or something? And then the other reading is, Husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. In the Bible, God, as we see, is also servant. He's also called helper. Where the husband and wife are called to imitate Jesus towards each other and their family. To be servant and to love each other as Christ loved his church. How did Christ love his church? He gave everything for them. It's this remarkable calling. And it's not just for the married couple. Take a priest, for example. John Paul II called a priest a man for others. Whatever we do, whatever we're calling we are as Christians, we're called to serve. We're called to sacrifice for others like our, like our Lord did. If you want to know your purpose in this world, look at how Christ loves his church and you'll find a purpose. So how do we respond to this, um, this beautiful teaching? Well, I th the first thing to do is to ask the Lord in prayer, what are you calling me to do? How are you calling me to serve? See, Often we can do so many things, <laughs> we, can, we can get ourselves burnt out by doing thousands of things, but what is the Lord calling you to do? Go aside, read the Bible, go for a walk and pray, write it down on your journal. What are you wanting me to do, Lord? How can I serve? And then ask him for grace. Ask him for his help, because we don't want to serve on empty tanks. You know, it's the worst thing when you see Christians serving with long faces or, you know, um, when they don't have much. Uh, if you go for a long drive, you need a lot of petrol. The petrol we need is the love of God. St. Therese of Avila said that um, those who have the love of God written on their hearts, they can accomplish anything. And another thing in the Bible, it says, um, perfect love casts out all fear. If you've got a difficult service assignment... Uh, you know, maybe someone you're caring for in your family, very difficult, ask the Lord to write his love on your heart, to fill up your tank, to give you the grace to do it, because we need him. We need him to serve. And when the most remarkable thing happens when we serve, when we serve each other, we become a sacrament of God's love for each other. What do I mean? In a sacrament, like take baptism. At Easter we have a pool there, 
and um, the pool, you know, we have water, and it's this great sign, you know, it's freezing in the water. We try to heat it up with boiling water, but it doesn't work. And so they dunk, and they come, <gasps> it's like they've come into new life, this breath. It's a beautiful symbol of the physical sign, but what you cannot see, what is more than what you can see, is also just as real. What you can't see is that person has been given the Holy Spirit who's created an indelible mark on their soul, can never be taken away, what the Holy Spirit's doing. It's giving them all they need to be children of God in the church. So much grace is given to that person. It's a remarkable thing. You know, uh, we come to the Eucharist, we see um, bread and wine, but what we can't see, what, so much more than what we can see, is we can come in contact with Jesus in the most profound way. He enters into our reality in communion. It's, it's, that's what a sacrament is. Now, when someone is serving someone else, if you give someone a cup of tea who's down, if you welcome someone, um, they see someone loving, kind. They feel welcome. But what so much more is happening, what they can't see is that they've encountered the love of God through you. If someone walks into our church and we welcome them, they, they say, oh, that's a lovely person. <laughs> also, they encounter Christ's church. They encounter Christ through his church. It's amazing. It's so powerful to serve one another. We become a sacrament of a love of God. So how is he calling us to serve? And ask him for the grace to do so, and so that we can be like him, our suffering servant, in Jesus' name.